Today I will share my journey as a modern day student through three stories, jazz, astrophysics, and bubbles. <laughs> my vision for education in the cloud shares the same core concept as these stories, which is that asking questions is essential to the learning process. When I was about 12 years old, I joined the jazz band at my middle school because it was either that or choir, and I was not about to sing in front of people. <laughs> I'd been playing clarinet for about a year, and I was very good at sounding like Fuvuzelas at the World Cup. <laughs> for those non-soccer fans out there, that's not something to aspire to musically. So here I was in jazz band, the only sixth grader and also the youngest, and I generally just tried to make it through rehearsal without being spoken to by the teacher. One day after missing rehearsal, I, the teacher gave me seven notes written out and said, go to the storage room and learn these notes. When you come back, I want you to play them for the class. Enter my 12-year-old mind for a minute. Wow, he literally sent me to the closet. <laughs> well, maybe if I'm quiet, he'll forget about me. Or maybe I could escape through a window. All right, I better just try the notes. Okay, so back in the class, the teacher said, you got it? Here's what I want you to do. Play those notes, any order, any rhythm, however you like. And he could see my hands shaking with nervousness and said, look, don't worry about them. Just close your eyes and play. And trust me, nothing can go wrong. So he sat down at the piano and he started playing and I closed my eyes and I started to play the notes and something wonderful happened. My vuvuzela honking started to sound like music. <laughs> and um, you know, we only played for a minute and then stopped and he looked to me and then to the, to the kids in the class and said, that's how it's done. And then the bell rang and everyone immediately forgot the whole ordeal over <laughs> corn dogs or meatloaf or some other ambiguous food item in the cafeteria. But me, I was walking on clouds because I had tried something new and had not fallen on my face. It was such a rush. So fast forward. When I was in high school, my dad took me to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and I stumbled into this theater there, but not just any theater. This was the Jimi Hendrix Theater. Non-stop, epic guitar playing. And, you know, my mind was blown. I got curious. What would happen if I tried the same notes I learned on clarinet on the guitar? And after some fiddling around, I figured them out. But my questions didn't stop there. I wanted to know all kinds of things. I wanted to know, you know, what, what, notes, what other notes sound good? Why do they sound good? And how could I play them like Jimmy? So I kept asking questions. And I, as a result, I kept getting better. And my mother saw my interest in jazz and set me up to take lessons with Rich Goldstein, a great jazz guitarist who would inspire all kinds of questions every time I'd see him. After high school, I went to the University of Hartford, where I would study acoustical engineering and jazz music. I'll be honest with you. I had no idea what engineering was. But I figured if I could play guitar in school, it's probably a good deal. It wasn't long before curiosity struck again. You see, the world's largest particle accelerator, CERN, was getting a lot of attention in the media because they were asking big questions. Questions like, what are we made of? How did we get here? How can we even exist? So I went down to the library, and I took out every book I could find related to CERN. Particle physics, astrophysics, optics, relativity. Apart from nearly breaking my back, carrying them back to my apartment, and racking up all kinds of late fees, I was discovering something. And it had virtually nothing to do with stars or planets or CERN. Because while those books showed me lots about the universe we live in, something else was far more exciting. I was discovering that it didn't matter what was being taught in my classes. If I could pick up a guitar and learn about jazz music, or pick up some books and learn about astrophysics, who was to say I couldn't learn anything outside of the classroom? So I kept asking questions and I kept seeking answers. And this process led me that summer to the US Department of Energy at Stanford, where I would work with a group that was hoping to discover dark matter. Now, dark matter is actually a great example of human curiosity. Scientists who have won the Nobel Prize have discovered that we only make a very small portion of the universe. In fact, everything we know, you, me, the stars, the planets, everything, 
is less than 5% of the universe, and the other 95% is composed of dark matter and dark energy. And here I was working on the germanium crystal dark matter detectors to help this group understand a fundamental question about the universe we live in. So I think you might know where this story is going. I kept asking questions and I kept seeking answers. When I got back to college, I only spent three months of my senior year there because I just needed to keep learning. So I went to NASA, a haven for those who dream big, and, and it was a great experience. But then, somewhere down the line, I started asking a new question. How can I use what I've learned so far to really help people? And I did what every kid my age does every day of their lives when they have a question. I turned to the internet. <laughs> Googling and Googling and reading and reading later, I found something. Some scientists at Harvard and Toronto have discovered that it is possible to use bubbles and sound to non-invasively deliver drugs to the brain. Now, usually, when I tell people I, we work with sound to fight brain cancer and diseases, they look at me like, what, do you sing to patients or something? <laughs> well, I think I've sung enough for you today, so I'll spare everyone here. And, um, and actually, we let the bubbles do all the singing for us. It turns out there's a barrier between the blood in your body and your brain that keeps bad substances from harming you, but also keeps potentially life-saving medicines from entering. The technique that I'm contributing to uses ultrasound to stimulate contrast agent microbubbles to get them to expand and contract in the brain microvasculature. And when they do, they somehow temporarily and safely open the blood-brain barrier and allow medicine to enter. It's truly amazing. What you might find curious, though, is that while scientists can safely, reliably, and repeatedly open the blood-brain barrier with this technique, we still do not understand exactly what is causing the barrier to open. So this year, I've been working with the Interface Group in Switzerland to design an experiment to find out. And in October, I will continue the research with a group at Oxford. I believe that understanding the mechanisms for opening the blood-brain barrier with this technique could help scientists to improve it, and, and ultimately help bring it closer to the clinic and to helping people. Jazz, astrophysics, and bubbles. They're part of my story because I dared to ask questions. How many of you have ever had a question but didn't raise your hand to ask it? I feel like we all go through this. How about this one? Who's ever had a question but waited until later to look it up online instead of asking it. Yeah, me too. So if you've ever sat through a college lecture, <laughs> you know that seminal moment when the teacher has filled the, the board with equations and who knows what, and, and turns to the, the class and says, does anyone have a question? And he scans the room, and everyone averts their eyes, and after several <laughs> seconds, total silence. And then he says, Great, you all understand it, let's move on. <laughs> well, the beauty of the internet is that it is a free place to ask questions. Google is not going to make fun of you for asking a question, right? So more and more we turn to the internet for knowledge because anything we might want to know is there and we don't have to be embarrassed for not knowing something. And it goes beyond Google. Over the past couple years, some great educational tools have come out online. I think where education in the cloud has excelled is at recreating the college classroom and in making it available for everyone. Right now, anyone in this room can go on their computers or on their phones and learn circuits or biology or fluid mechanics by uh, watching online video lectures for free. But what is the next step? Well, let's look outside of education at what is happening on the internet. Right now, the internet is a very efficient place for information. Say you want to find a great recipe for cookies, or to learn how to tie a tie, or just to check a quick fact during a conversation. Whatever you might want to know, the fastest way to figure it out is generally on the internet. We're in the information age, but that information has become more personal, and the internet has become a reflection of our social lives. Take, for example, the popularity of apps where people can share 
photos and videos, or cloud radio where you can share your favorite music in playlists, or the enormous popularity of messaging apps, enabling communication at a frequency never seen before. And we use these apps for hours every day because they don't just give us the content we want for free, they enable us to experience that content together. So where does education fit into this gotta have it now, social media, multimedia, life in the cloud landscape? Well, a few months ago, I started thinking about this very question with my fellow student, Brandon Moffitt. We got to talking about what we would have wanted as students. You know, it turns out we don't like full length online video lectures because when you have to sit through a bunch of lectures every day already, the last thing you want to do is go home and sit through more of them. And on the other side of things, the traditional text-based uh, text question and answer forums are certainly faster than full-length online video lectures. But they too fall short when it comes to stimulating the various ways that students learn. I mean, look, we're modern day students, right? If we wanted text-based answers, we would just download the solutions manual. What we want are fast answers to our specific questions and a judgment-free zone to ask them. We want a place to effectively and efficiently learn that gives us the full content richness and social experience of the internet. We want to feed off the collective knowledge of our peers so that our questions are met with individualized explanations that help us to actually understand the material. Most importantly, as broke college students, we want it completely for free. <laughs> So since we couldn't find anything that delivers on all of these criteria, we set out to build it ourselves. And as engineering students, we decided to start with something we know relatively well, STEM. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Currently, stembuds.com is a place where students can anonymously ask STEM-related questions and answer each other by video. For the fall semester, we plan to release a completely upgraded and revamped app. There are principally two new features you will see. First, we are introducing multimedia tools for answering questions. With these tools, students can make short multimedia presentations of any combination of videos, images, drawings, and audio explanations made right in the app. We hope that this will make the answering process more convenient and intuitive for students while giving them the tools they need to generate beautiful answers to questions. Second, we are, building, we are developing a playlist-based learning feature where students can engage in creating and sharing playlists of these multimedia answers. This feature gives students the ability to study with a familiar interface inspired by online music playlists. So say a student has specific topics to study for an exam, or an engineer needs to brush up to help them at the job, or maybe someone's just feeling inspired to learn some science. We want to give them a learning experience that is efficient yet engaging, with content that is beautiful yet user-generated. So what is our goal with STEM Buds? Not just to create an app, but to create a collaborative and open community to help students to reach their academic potential and to gather the confidence to pursue their dreams and ideas. Can you imagine a world without the innovations of the STEM fields? Electricity, plumbing, music, recorded music, modern medicine, global communication and transportation are all possible because of the innovations of STEM students just like the students here today. We are giving STEM buds away for free because history has shown us that education is the key to making the world a better place. I would like to leave the students here with a message and the parents here can pass it on. Ask questions and seek answers because you can solve the world's most challenging and complex problems. I believe with the right infrastructure for learning, you could cure cancer, you could end hunger, you could live to be 200 years old, you could end our dependence on oil, you could fix our agricultural system, and at the end of a long week, you could play mini golf on Mars while enjoying an ice cream cone that never melts because you dared to ask and dared to discover. 
best of luck and thank you. Thanks.